give me unto God who's head of my life, Minister Lord Spade. Uh, all my father's children, you know, I, I had a shot a video about the five heavenly crowns, but uh, somewhere I lost it. Uh, uh, it, it, it deleted so I wanted to do this video again to talk about the five heavenly crowns um, of heaven uh, and just to, just I wanted to speak on them because I just you know in our Christian walk do we ever think about the rewards you know our suffering that we have here on this earth you know it's not in vain and the Lord knew that we was gonna go through trials and tribulation and and there is a payday coming for the trials and tribulations that we adhere to on this earth. And the first crown is the incorruptible crown. And it's talked about in 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, uh, the 24th and the 25th verse, when the Apostle Paul talks about how the immortality, mortality will put on immortality, corruptible will put on in, incorruptible, and and that's to compensate for all of the heartaches and all of the sickness. This is the crown that when we accept Christ as our personal Savior, when we become incorruptible, that there's no more cancer, there's no more diabetes, there's no more um, just all the things that has just taken our life. Uh, no kinds of sickness, no liver failure, no congestive heart failure, and just the incorruptible crown that we as believers uh, will receive in heaven. And, and it's for all that that accept Christ as their personal Savior. It talks about running the race. And, and this is the crown that we receive just for running uh, this Christian race. And and um, the word crown, the origin of it is Stephanos. And uh, it comes from Stephen, the martyr. Um, that is the origin. Uh, it's, it, it's Greek. And we know that Stephen was the first martyr, a uh, Christian martyr. The second crown we talk about is the crown of rejoicing. And the crown of rejoicing is talked about in 2 Timothy 4, 8. It talks about how it's how we look at things, how the perspective, how that we can still have joy in the Lord despite our circumstances, that our joy is not based on our circumstances, but looking at things through spiritual eyes and that rejoicing even in our trials and tribulations, uh, knowing that no matter what we go through in life, that, you know, that we can rejoice because knowing there is a better way and God has helped us to endure our suffering. Um, Jesus said he would help us to bear our burdens. And and this is this is the crown that we earn when we rejoice in our circumstances. Not not ever saying that we won't get disheartened, but just talking about how we look at things because see what we have to understand is that um you know everything that we do you know we the things that happen to us, you know, it's not what happened to us. It's how we respond to it is what make or break us. You know, our circumstances, because sometimes God doesn't change what happens to us, but he changed our perception on how we, we receive it. And this is just talking about the rejoicing, the rejoicing that we can have despite what we go through. Uh, Christians shouldn't always be stepping on their lip, having a pity party because God has made it so that we would be able to rejoice in our trials and tribulations because it says it in James and it talks about in Peter that we're going to have trials and tribulations and in James it talks about counting it all joy when we do go through diverse ch and circumstances. Um, the third crown I want to talk about, I want to talk about the crown of righteousness. And we know that Apostle Paul talked about in 2 Timothy um, 4.8 when he says that later for me is a, a crown of righteousness. He said, but not only me, he said, but on that day when the Lord, the righteous judge would give not only to me, but all that love his appearing, which means this is the crown that we're going to get if we're looking for the Lord. Because I got news for you. If you're not looking for him and you're not anticipating him and walking in his ways you're not going to be able to receive this crown it says it says that the key verse it says that all that love his appearing now if you're not looking for jesus and you're not grounded and rooted and walking in his ways and have received him you're not eligible for this crown 
That's what the word says. This I'm not making this up. You can read uh, 2 Timothy uh, 4, 8. It says those who love his appearing. You know, everybody want to go to heaven. Nobody's ready to die. And it's not about being ready, but we ought to be prepared to die even though we're not ready. See, we have to know how to live. And when we're on this earth, we need to prepare to die. You know, there's a lot of people that, that live well. But how many people know how to die well? And that's what we, we prepare our life to get ready to leave here and go to that blessed hope, the thing that we endure for. Don't we understand that heaven is what we endure this Christian journey for? That we're not to get caught up in the things of this world? And that is what the Lord prepares us for. We see five, it's a clown, crown of glory. And that's when Stephen's, when he was martyred, the crown of glory. This is when when Stephen looked up into heaven and he seen Jesus with open arms ready to receive, to receive him. He looked up and he seen the splendor of the Lord. And even though he was about to die, he, he stopped death to, to, to tell the Lord to forgive his enemy. He said, hold not their charge to them. Because even though he was being stoned, when he looked up and seen Jesus, he knew that everything was all right. See, it doesn't matter what happened to your body as long as your soul is right. And Stephen knew that all was well with his soul. But he stood his ground. He had a charge to keep. It caused him his life. And the crown of glory, sometimes it's called the martyr's crown because of the fact that, you know, Stephen seen that that crown of glory and that's what he was going to receive because he looked up and Jesus actually received him oh that would be something to hold when you look up and see your final days and to look up and see King Jesus reaching his hand out to take you in oh that must be some sight and don't you long for that time wouldn't that be something to know that, Lord, I went through all of this on this earth and, and you're here ready to receive me? To tell me, well done, come take my hand, all of your suffering is over. And you endured even to death. And you identified with my example, even to martyrism. To stand for the truth, no matter if it cost you your life. That's a crown of glory, brothers and sisters. And a lot of the people over, people are being persecuted and being killed for Christ's sakes. They are the ones that's going to get the martyr's crown because they lose their life for Christ. And, you know, and then I'm talking about the last crown. It's the crown of life. And we know we hear that in Revelation 2.10. The crown of life. The life that conquered death. That gave us eternal life. That we're going to live in a home not made by hands. That we're going to live forever. And I think, I believe, this is me. I think this is the crown that was earned at Jesus' death. The crown of life to know that death, you have no place. He conquered death when he was crucified. He died and he was buried, but on the third day he rose. He rose so that we could have a crown of life. There would be no more sorrow. There would be no more tears. Oh, that blessed hope. The crown of life that Jesus died to give us. And you know, that is the rewards that it talks about. And there's a lot of more rewards for us as Christians. And, 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 and I've had conversations and, and a lot of people have said, well, you know, why doesn't it, it, it tells us what rewards we're going to get? Well, you know what? I don't think we can handle all of it. And I think the Lord give us on a need to know basis. You know, he's given us the Bible to read 66 verses and some of us haven't even read the Bible. So how can we handle anything else? All we need to do is to walk in Jesus ways Walk, because obedience is better than sacrifice. 
the Bible basic instructions before leaving this earth. That's what we have to hold on to. And knowing that we're not going to be perfect, but to walk and show people, we can show people that there is deliverance, there is restoration. The things that have kept you bound, what Satan has got you bound, Christ died to break free. Those chains have been broken. We're not bound by that anymore. Because the Bible says, whoever you serve is your master. If you serve the things of this world, that is your master. Sunday morning Christianity don't get it. You have to live for Christ daily and ask him to help you to be better and to strive and to do better. Because we all have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. But there are some things, when you want to put things down and you want the Lord to truly deliver you from things, you need to ask the Lord to really deliver you. But make sure that you're ready to be delivered. See, that's the problem. If the Lord takes something from you, then you don't go around and pick it back up. Make sure you're ready to be delivered from that. Because the Bible says that it's better that you've not de been delivered from it than when the Lord takes you from it and you go back to it. No, so we need to have a made-up mind and be very sure that we're ready to walk in Christ. Only when we're able to walk in Christ and know and grounded and rooted and ready to live for Him, only can we be a difference and be the change that the world need to see. But you got to have a made-up mind, brothers and sisters. And, and it's sad to say, that's why a lot of people are not in church, because we say one thing and we do something else. And if we do that, we, we look like a bunch of hypocrites. And, and, and if we're a bunch of hypocrites in the church, then we can't pull people in because they are saying, they're looking at the whole church as being a lie. Well, I don't need to go in there because they're not doing any better than I'm doing. So be careful. Walk your witness. Walk what you talk about, what you preach about, what you live about. Make sure. We have a charge to keep. When God called us, he qualifies us. And I know that there are things that are hard and there are struggles, but I truly believe that God would not tell you to do something that he didn't equip you to do. God gave us the power to overcome the enemy. And that is why we have the whole armor of God, because God has already gave us the equipment. The problem is we just don't use what God has already given us. Oh, we have the power to break the chains, but a lot of times we don't want to break chains and we stay in bondage. And for that reason, we go and at communion, we're asking the Lord to deliver us from the same thing over and over and over again. Things that we've already been delivered from, but we let the enemy have place and we're doing the same thing over and over again. And then he get his clutches in us. Not that we lose our salvation, but make sure when you're delivered, it says, who the Son set free is free indeed. So if God sets you free, that settles it. If God sets you free, the devil in hell have no power over you. You have to understand that. And John says, hey, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness but you have to walk in that way knowing God will sustain you and he will give you the power he will give you the power to lift up and encourage other people you know what I'm going to tell you something if you have been a drug addict you're the best witness for someone that's struggling with an addiction yeah I did that, and I'm not judging you, but I'm here to tell you that I did the same thing. But guess what? When I yielded to the Lord, he set me free. And I'm here to tell you that I am a witness, and God is faithful, and he is true, and he can deliver you. There is a deliverance in Christ Jesus. And that's what we need to do, not to condemn no one. Because we have all sinned and came short of the glory of God. But to show that there is a better way and God can deliver you. If you want to be delivered, God can deliver you. Every addiction, 
everything you ever went through got buried at the cross. When Jesus died, all of that died. And we need to know that. But we have to stand fast and know that our work in the Lord is not in vain. Because the Lord's word will not return void. But you got to stand fast and know who you are in Christ. And stay grounded and rooted. And know there's going to have to be some naysayers. You're going to get some backlash. You know what? Jesus got backlash. It doesn't matter. Because guess what? You're covered under the blood. And once you're covered under the blood of Jesus, you're all right. But I want to just talk about the five heavenly crowns. Like I said, I did this video a couple of days ago and it got it got erased. But the devil is a lie. And I want to put it out there because there are some rewards. But we have to live our life and we have to work while this day because night comes when no man can work. And believe me, brothers and sisters, payday is coming. But can you afford to cash in what you have earned? Minister Laura Spade from Twin Ministries. I urge you to check out Twin Ministry page, the YouTube page. God bless each and every one of you. I thank you for your support. It is because of you. And I thank you. May God bless you. May the peace of Jesus be with you, each and every one. But I would just want to talk for a little while about the five heavenly crowns. Which ones will you receive? May God bless you.